Hey guys, Haz here at Shield Canine, and today we are going to talk about hitting dogs and protection work. This is something that a lot of people have a lot of confusion about. Whenever I post videos of dogs doing protection work, or I see people commenting on other videos of protection work, I see a lot of people commenting on the fact that there's a stick or a whip or a clatter stick present. And people are always very worried about this, very concerned about this and they assume the worst. They assume that the stick is being used to force the dog to do something he, he doesn't naturally want to do. They assume that the stick is there to cause pain for the sadistic pleasure of the trainer or some such nonsense. These, these perceptions are very common and generally it's people that don't really understand the work and they just are going based off of the emotions that they're feeling when they're watching something because they can't imagine the dogs would do things like that unless you were doing terrible things to them to force them to do that when in fact the opposite is the case to make things something perfectly clear we do not use the stick to force the dog to do protection work if you have to force a dog to do protection work or bite work or apprehension work or whatever kind of work you want to call it it's not the dog for that the dogs that we use in sport competition, the dogs that we use for police work, personal protection, so on and so forth, these are dogs whose highest desire is to do bite work because that's the way they've been bred. They perceive a very high level of pleasure. They get a dopamine spike from performing protection work. That's why they can barely contain themselves, especially the young dogs, you see them coming on the field, they're wearing their harness, they're getting ready to work, they know what it is. They're super excited. They're super happy. They're not trying to run back to the car. If you have a dog that doesn't want to do this type of work, that dog, you should go and do something else with it. Do dock diving, do, do uh, fun obedience, whatever it is. Protection work only is good for dogs that want to do the work. Okay, so that's number one. Now let's actually talk about why we do use whips, clatter sticks, you know, uh, in Schutzhund, um, in the competitions, you will see them using a, uh, a, the helper will be using a soft stick during the test, okay? There, there's a number of reasons why we use these devices in the training. So I'm gonna talk to you about them. So number one, let's talk first about personal protection and police service work, okay? So this is a dog that has been selected to either protect somebody's home to protect somebody's life, to protect somebody's family, okay, and that's the ultimate purpose of the dog. Or in the case of a police service dog, this is a dog that's been selected to track down criminals, to um, apprehend people if necessary, to protect their handler's life in violent situations, okay? So these, these ultimate purposes for these dogs, it's no joke. These are things that are very serious, and if you don't train the dog properly, if you don't prepare the dog properly, you're setting that dog up to fail. And in my opinion, that is the abuse. That is the worst thing you can do. Now again, there are a lot of people, they have this perception, oh my God, you, you, you had to force the dog to bite somebody. How dare you force dogs to do police work? They don't have a choice. They absolutely do have a choice. We do not select dogs for police protection work that don't want to do it with every fiber of their being and don't demonstrate an extremely high level of aptitude for that work, okay? So that let's make that really clear. Now, this is a training device. That's what you have to understand, okay? I can use this, okay, a whip or a stick, to impact the grip of the dog, how he's biting. If I need him to counter in, I can use the stick to encourage him to counter in. If I need him to pull, I can use the stick to encourage him to pull. If I need him to change his body position in relation to me, I can use the stick to push the dog into a different place physically. So let's say for instance, I need him to come forward and push up onto me. I can make some pressure behind him with the stick and he's gonna come forward and respond to the pressure by coming forward, okay? Um, if I'm in an escape as a helper and I need the dog to start pulling, I can make pressure here and the dog is going to go here away from the pressure, all right? So that's the impacting the grip and impacting the dog's body position in relation to you, the helper or the decoy, is the most, uh, I, I think, one of the most important uses for the stick or the whip. All right. The other thing that the whip, the clatter stick, the soft stick can act as is it's something that you can use to fend the dog off. So a lot of dogs 
are very used to just going and biting the decoy right it's very easy for them that's what they've been doing they, they've done countless times is they just go and they bite the decoy when they're let go what you can do is to further prepare the dog to actually be deployable right to actually be ready for a real situation is you can use the stick to fend the dog off to push him off of you okay and that's something that a lot of dogs if they haven't been shown that that's very confusing for them being fended off right and it becomes a little bit of a stress and a pressure for them if they haven't been shown that in training and again it's something that the dog might realistically face in an actual deployment situation so that's something that you again want to show the dog is is what it looks like to be fended off with an object or with a stick basically what the stick is is it's also an extension of me the helper or the decoy's hand all right so if i want to gauge the dog's intent if i want to determine you know where's he at mentally or if i want to put pressure on him but not get bit using the stick is a fantastic way to do that if i want to give him a little tap on the paws to make him upset and to escalate the level of aggression and arousal that he has in that specific moment i can do that and build the dog and actually show him the correct response to that sensation in the scenario or the context of protection work so it actually acts as an extension to my hand without of course me getting bitten um, the other thing that you will see the stick used for is in tests okay so when you see the stick used in a trial so in IGP or Schutzen as it used to be called in Schutzen trials you will see the helpers all have a soft and padded stick so this is a padded stick that's flexible um, with a whip attached in the trial there is no whip there's just the stick by itself which we can show you okay and you will see that the helper in the in the biting portions of the trial will pressure the dog with the stick good boy so what we're looking for when we drive the dog is that the grip doesn't change when we're making the stick pressure and when we make contact that Good. the eyes and that the grip remains steady and I can calm him too Good. I can stimulate pulling right by making some pressure forward on the dog I can get him back up off oh off my body the stick is a very important part of the pressure phase in oh. Schutzhund or IGP as it is now known we want to see a dog that can handle the stick pressure that's just me waving the stick making no physical contact with the dog okay and I'm judging the grip I'm judging the body position, the head, the eyes, the ears, all these things tell you a little something about the kind of dog you're dealing with, the character of the dog. And then when you make the physical contact, okay, as you saw there, again, it's not something that's going to injure the dog. It is physically uncomfortable. My thigh smarts somewhat right now. But it's an important part of the selection process for quality breeding stock. Even if we're not gonna breed that dog, we should know about him. We should know what kind of character he has. So we know if we should repeat the breeding that his parents, his, of his parents, if that combination was a successful combination. So it's not even necessarily about that specific dog. It's about him proving the genetic quality of the combination and the bloodline that he's coming from. So these things are very important for us to know and for us to be able to judge. And as you can see, the way the dog comes in, he loves this. He wants to do this. There's nothing he wants more. The other thing that we do is desensitization, all right? So once again, we talked about these dogs that are gonna be asked to perform really high level tasks, tasks at which the, the consequence for failure can either be 
um, you know, somebody losing their life or the dog getting injured or losing his life. So this is a this is a very serious thing. I need to make sure my dog is desensitized to something coming towards him, right? If you think about human beings, if we're trying to fight something off, what's our instinct? Our instinct is to pick something up and try to fend off whatever it is that's coming towards us, right? That's, that's, that's attacking us. We're trying to fend it off and usually we'll pick up something, usually not a stick, whatever that comes to hand. But the dog now is already desensitized to seeing something in the hand of an individual that he is now in a position where he must defend against that individual or apprehend that individual. The other thing, and this is for whips especially, I mark the transition from one behavior to another. So you'll notice a lot in the protection work that I show, it's not all just bite, bite, bite. There's a time to bark and there's a time to bite. The transition from barking to biting is also important. Okay, and this is something that a lot of people really don't understand. It's not all one thing. A lot of dogs are very good. Most dogs will have a preference for the barking or for the biting. All right, and they'll kind of struggle with the other side of it. The fundamental, one of the fundamental things that we teach in protection training is that transition from the barking to the biting. From the warning to the act of apprehending somebody in the case of a police service dog. So I will actually use the whip to mark that transition. The dog is barking. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's the mark of the transition. And now I'm moving into a prey behavior. Good boy. Good boy. I'm asking the dog and I'm letting the dog know when you hear that, it's time to come forward and bite. And that has multiple purposes. Number one, the dog hears the noise, okay? And instead of thinking, oh, that's a little bit of a scary noise, he thinks that's go time, okay? So that crack of the whip marks the moment that we've transitioned from warning or from defending to aggressing, to becoming offensive and moving forward. So now, not only am I desensitizing the dog to that noise, I'm providing him, it's almost like a clicker that's a whip, right? I'm letting him know, time to move forward now into the prey behavior, all right? So that transition marker of the whip crack is very important. And um, I use it a lot in my protection training. So instead of the dog becoming worried when he hears this noise, he actually becomes more active and more forward because he's expecting to engage when he hears that noise. He has that anticipation, it's called classical conditioning. Somebody could say, well, why on earth are you hitting these dogs? It's a sport, you don't need to do it. Well, the reason why we do it is because the sport, all these biting sports that you see with the dogs, whether it's French ring, whether it's uh, IGP, these biting sports are where the breeding dogs for the actual working dogs, the actual dogs that you see in service, both with the military, with police departments, bite sports are where most of these dogs come from. It's where the gene pool for most of these dogs come from. And those competitions are where we establish the ranking of that dog for breeding. Not maybe an actual ranking, but people, the breeders, go to these competitions, participate in these competitions, and this is where you can go to show the quality of your dog and your training, but also the quality of your dog, okay? So that drive is really important. It's kind of hard to hide a dog that has stick issues, no matter what training you're doing in that drive. It's really important to see how the dog reacts to the pressure of that drive. Again, not because we're mean, but because we need to ensure that when we're selecting dogs for breeding, the next generation of working dogs, we're selecting candidates that are only the best genetic products to pass on those genes that are going to be tomorrow's police dog, tomorrow's special forces dog, so on and so forth. So the sports, the bite sports are an essential part of husbanding that gene pool, maintaining that gene pool, and ensuring that we're only using dogs in our breeding programs that are of superior working quality and not watering down um, a breed that has a very specific um, set of purposes. So, again, the test 
in bike sports, whether it's ring sport, Mondio, Mondio French ring, IGP, PSA, KNPV, and KNPV, there's a reed stick, and as the dog comes in, the reed stick is broken across the dog on the long attack, okay? And we can argue the how effective the t these tests are, but the fact remains, I've caught a lot of dogs, I've done a lot of bite work, and even the dogs that for three years, you know, have seen the stick, since they were puppies, they've seen the stick. Me as a helper, and as somebody who knows what they're looking at can watch that dog being worked by a, in a trial by a decoy and they can say that dog has some stick issues he has some avoidance issues maybe not a good dog for breeding maybe a perfectly fine dog to have as a as a pet or as a as a com competition dog but this is not a dog that that has the genetics that we're looking for to um, perform the breeding that we're after okay so i hope that makes sense the last thing is testing the deployability of a dog. If I'm preparing a dog for a situation where I know that dog is actually quite possibly going to be in a position where he has to protect somebody. Lastly, let's talk about deployability, okay? Because deployability is really important and we kind of already alluded to it. That if there's a very real possibility that dog is going to be in a position where he has to deal with somebody who's an active threat to his handler, or, or a dangerous criminal, for instance, that needs to be apprehended, that may fight the dog. And there's multiple videos of this, if you don't believe me, of somebody who, you know, whether they're high on drugs or whether they're just a very violent person that really wants to commit harm and, and, and damage, right? Where an individual has a police dog sent on them or has a security dog or protection dog sent on them and they fight the dog. If I haven't prepared the dog for that scenario, I'm going to be remiss and I'm not doing that dog any favors. Right? It's just like if you're preparing somebody to fight in mixed martial arts or you're giving somebody self-defense self classes. These pursuits are not without physical discomfort. They're not without mental and physical adversity. Okay, So the stick is definitely not the only way to exert that mental and physical adversity, but it is one way. It's a way that I can you know, make the person feel, un or sorry, make the dog feel discomfort and gauge his reaction to that discomfort. Make sure that he's doing the correct things when he feels that discomfort and not the, the, the wrong things. It's, it's how I can test the dog's level of deployability. Is he ready? Is he going to be a good partner for somebody in that specific task, whatever it is, right? So any program that purports to create dogs for protection work, or for police service work that doesn't expose those dogs to mental and physical adversity, and yes, the stick can be part of it, right? That program is, is not being forthright. That program is not doing those dogs any favor. It's setting the handler and the dog up to fail. So to summarize, the stick has many purposes. It's a training tool, it's a pressure device, it's a way to test the dogs, it's a way to select for breeding, it's a way to ensure that the dog is prepared for an actual real deployment situation. Um, it's basically an extension of the decoy or the helper's hand. It is definitely not there to force a dog to do something that he or she doesn't want to do. Dogs, once again, that don't want to do protection work have no business doing it. And I, I can't count how many people have brought their dogs here and 99% of it's breeding. I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. I see a lot of people, they bring their dogs here. Hey, Haz, can you train my dog to do protection work? And the dog, listen, I look at the dog and I know the dog was not bred for that work. The dog was either from lines, just bred to be nice family pets, or, you know, they're from no particular breeding, you know, in, in any capacity. And I look at the dog and I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, probably he's not gonna do it. And I do some little tests. I don't beat the dog or anything like this, of course. I do some little tests and I see, yeah, it's not in his heart. He doesn't want to do this. This is making him really uncomfortable. And I say, you know, I don't think that this is for your dog. Let's find something that your dog likes to do. Or maybe try something else with your dog because I don't think this specific particular task is up your dog's alley. All right, we definitely don't want to be doing any kind of bite work or protection work with dogs that don't want to do it.